but there's a lot of collective imbalance in the root chakra right now. But regardless of or maybe because of <laughs> the collective, we need to remember that in order to heal any part of the collective, we need to start with the individual. So it has to start with you. I have to do my own work on myself. You have to do your own work on yourself and so on. And it's what keeps us grounded here in the human world, in this reality, so that we can survive in order to then move up the levels we need to move up for our soul to grow and ascend. We are not meant to deny our humanness, but we also need to remember that we are more than our humanness. And that the whole reason we're here in these physical bodies is for our soul to evolve. Welcome to the Fire Within Podcast helping you to have confidence in who you really are and turn the spark within you into a full burning soul led fire. My name is Carrie Jokala. I am your host. I am a Reiki master teacher, a fitness instructor, a wife, a mom to two little boys. And this is episode 216. And if you were here for the last episode and you know that we had a short break. <laughs> I'm even more excited to be back now because ideas are finally flowing in left and right again. So I have lots of topics to bring you and a new program, a reboot in a sense of one and a slight reboot slash update, but really actually a completely new program. <laughs> coming off the back of it. So we'll talk about that later. If any of what I share today resonates with you, I would highly appreciate it. I would love you forever if you would share this or any of your favorite episodes. Share it to your Instagram. Tag me at I am Carrie Jokala. Share it on any platform that you're on. Send it to a friend or a family member. And if you are ever interested in working together, I encourage you to always take a look at the show notes. You can head over to the website and check out all the ways, including Reiki, Akashic Record Sessions, Oracle Card Readings, the new program that's coming up, all the things. So last time we talked about mental toughness alongside divine feminine energy, essentially balancing your masculine energy with your feminine energy. And we're kind of going to follow that path for a little bit. We're going to keep expanding on that because it just feels like a necessary conversation and something that I feel like I also personally understand even more as I go through just my own life's journey. What I want to talk about today is the idea that you are not your root chakra. There is, in my opinion way too much focus on things in this world right now that are just very root chakra focused. And while they do also need to come into balance first, so we do need to focus on the root chakra. Once we get that stable, we need to remember that we need to move past the root chakra. We need to move beyond it. We need to keep moving up the spine, up the energy centers, up the different chakras to eventually completely open the crown and have that connection to the divine, to God, to the universe, whatever you call it, to have that flow going. We need to have the grounding. We need to have the human side, but there also needs to be a balance with the spiritual side, the feminine side, the creative side. So I'm not going to get too much into a lot of the controversial, polarizing topics, because that's not the point. No matter what you think about anything that's going on, I think we can agree that there's a lot of focus on identity, sexuality, people trying to find out who they really are, trying to be themselves, trying to fit in, or maybe stand out, I suppose, but just really figuring out who they're supposed to be in this world. 
but it's all in what I see, what I feel very surface level, all very human level. And I'm the last one to negate our humanness. I don't believe for a second that we are supposed to deny our humanness. I don't believe in this deny the flesh thing. I get what parts of that is meant to refer to, but just in general, this whole ignoring that we're human, acting like it's bad to be human, I don't agree with that. But there's a lot of collective imbalance in the root chakra right now. And I'm not sharing this from the perspective of someone who thinks she has it all figured out. So don't take it that way. (laughs) I'm still on this journey too. This is a come with me thing, not a look at me thing. This is just what I have learned, what I'm perceiving and sharing that and hoping that I guess it helps you in some way. But regardless of or maybe because of (laughs) the collective, we need to remember that in order to heal any part of the collective, we need to start with the individual. So it has to start with you. I have to do my own work on myself. You have to do your own work on yourself and so on. That's how we heal the collective. So we start with our own root chakras. And in case you do not know what the root chakra is, first of all, I did do a whole series of podcast episodes on each individual chakra. I do not recall the numbers off the top of my head, but I don't feel like it was that long ago. (laughs) But you can, maybe it was, it feels like it was just the other day, but it may have been a long time ago. But you can go back and find those episodes and go a little bit more in depth into specifically the root chakra, but just a brief explanation here. I have pulled out again the book of chakra healing by Liz Simpson, just to help me give a very concise definition. The root chakra is concerned with physical needs and basic human survival. So let me stop there already. (laughs) Physical needs and basic human survival. So this is why we start at the root chakra, because If you've ever been in any type of lack in your life, where I'm sure we all likely have been at some point, some level of struggle where you're worrying about paying bills, worrying about getting food on the table, anything that is considered a basic need for survival. If those things don't exist it only makes sense that we can't move past the root chakra. It has to be brought into stability. It has to be brought into balance before we can move on. And if you've ever been able to move out of that period of lack and you can look back at others who are still in that period themselves, it makes it, I think, that much easier to have the perspective on how hard it is to move past that part, to clear that chakra when you are in a lack reality. So I don't think it's fair to ever deny it, but it doesn't help to overfocus on it. But that's a different conversation. I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to start getting all over the place. We're going to stay focused on this. Okay, so back to the book. Root chakra, it has the lowest vibrational rate of all the chakras resonating to the color red. So randomly throughout episodes in the past, we've mentioned, we've talked about how Low vibrational, low frequency does not automatically or necessarily mean bad. Obviously, your root chakra is not bad. It's just a lower frequency, a slower vibration. And it's what keeps us grounded here in the human world, in this reality, so that we can survive in order to then move up the levels we need to move up for our soul to grow and ascend. If we don't have that stability, we can't focus on the growth and the ascension because there's too much chaos going on. The chaos needs to be calmed. And just to expand just a tiny bit more, it's showing what element it's related to. And then there is a particular symbol for the root chakra. The element earth is represented by the square or yantra and the inverted triangle denotes downward movement of energy, which keeps us grounded to the earth. So what we've already been talking about. So this is your sense of safety. 
This is your sense of stability. Anything dealing with family, the home, finances, all of this resonates in the root chakra. So if any of these things are creating chaos in your life, it means there is an imbalance in your root chakra. It doesn't mean it's your fault, but if you are severely affected by this, emotionally, spiritually, however, there's going to be an imbalance in your root chakra. If you can't find that sense of safety and stability in your life, if you are often in a state of fear or worry or stress to an overabundant level, we're not meant to be in those states all the time. So if it's been perpetual, there's likely going to be a remaining imbalance in the root chakra. So all that said, we need to bring that into balance. There are many ways to do that. I highly recommend the energy work route, which in my path would involve a Reiki session where we will go through all of the chakras, but also stay tuned because the program that I'm dreaming up in my mind is going to deal with each chakra and guide you through each chakra, starting with the root. But the reason I titled this, You Are Not Your Root Chakra, is because I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people who are getting stuck in the root chakra, whether or not they have it figured out. So maybe the imbalance just continues and they're struggling to move past it. That makes sense. So we do need to focus on the root chakra. But then there's also people who either think they have it figured out or maybe they do actually have it figured out, but they're unwilling for whatever reason, maybe because it's a comfort zone. (laughs) They've found a sense of safety and stability and they don't want to leave it. I suppose that makes sense, but they're not moving beyond the root chakra. They're not moving up to the next levels to clear out those next chakras. And whether or not you go on this journey, knowing anything about the chakras is irrelevant. You don't have to. I think it's it's helpful. (laughs) It can speed up the process to have some knowledge about your energy body. But if you just trust your intuition and trust the messages that come through. Do your best to remain in relationship and communication with God, with the divine, whatever you want to call it. doesn't matter what name to me. You can still make it through this journey, but I believe that the knowledge is helpful. So as far as those who think they have it figured out or possibly do actually have it figured out, but still aren't moving beyond the root chakra, there's this over-focus on the things that are keeping them stuck in the root chakra, like overfocus on how much money they do or don't have and what that means about them and who they are. And overfocus on the physical body. Don't at me about that. <laughs> One way or another, I feel like there's an overfocus on the physical body and our appearance in many ways, not just what you're probably thinking right now, <laughs> just in general. We need to take care of our bodies. We are free to establish our own identity. That's part of why we're here is figuring out who we are. But there's an overfocus on it where it becomes the only thing. And we are so much more than our bodies. We are not meant to deny our humanness, but we also need to remember that we are more than our humanness. And that the whole reason we're here in these physical bodies is for our soul to evolve. Our soul has chosen to use a human body as a vehicle for ascension. And no matter what your religious or spiritual affiliation, I think we can all agree that the whole purpose is we are seeking to become better versions of ourselves. We are seeking growth on a soul level. That's the whole reason we're here. So if we stay stuck in any chakra, we stunt that growth. And there's a whole separate conversation there about free will, soul contracts, what's meant for you will not miss you. I do believe that what's meant for us will not miss us, but on some level, the free will has to have a say about when, where, how, and why it finally finds us. We can speed up the process and we can also slow it down. So we need to be grounded. We need to establish that safety and security regarding all the things that relate to our root chakra. 
It doesn't mean that we have to become rich. It doesn't mean that we have to have the best home. It doesn't mean that we have to have the best family, the best relationships, the best job. But we need to be at a place emotionally, spiritually, and yes, physically, where we feel safe and secure to at least a level of enough where we can trust that there is enough. So yes, we need to take care of our human needs. There's no bypassing on that. I believe no matter what state we're in, we can manifest, but we have to start talking about how it's a lot harder when your reality is lack. And I think that is already one of the topics that I have written down that we're going to talk about. So we're not denying the struggle that exists within the root chakra and the things related to it. But we have to understand that once we bring it into balance, we need to move beyond it. Even if we think we have an imbalance, we need to be honest about whether it truly is in balance or if we're just overcompensating, if we're trying to hide things from ourselves, ignore things, not face reality so that we can eventually deal with it and then move beyond it because there's so much more. We move up to the sacral, which is about creativity, our sexuality, our intimate relationships. We move up to our solar plexus, which is really your strongest sense of identity, who you really are, your confidence level. We move up to your heart, which connects the upper and the lower chakras. The heart is about exactly what you would expect it to be about. It is about love, self-love, the ability to give love, receive love. We move into your throat, your ability to speak your truth, to express yourself the way that you want to express yourself, that you need to express yourself. And eventually we move into your third eye, your intuition, and your crown, your connection with the divine. Any of those chakras can be open and flowing and doing just fine at any point in time while others are blocked. There is not some like set level of gates where all of the chakras are blocked off because one is needing to be worked on or anything like that. There's a constant ebb and flow. And just because they're all clear at one time doesn't mean that they always will be. And just because they're blocked at any point in time doesn't mean you can't unblock them. So you can have a strong intuition. You can have a strong connection to God while still having a bit of a shaky root chakra. But we only strengthen that connection by solidifying the things involved with the root chakra, by getting grounded, feeling supported, feeling held in our humanness, in this reality, knowing that our physical bodies are safe in this space so that we can then turn our attention to things outside of just survival. Because we didn't come here just to survive, I could say we came here to thrive, but that would be so cliche. (laughs) And I know I talk in cliches a lot, but we're here to evolve on that soul level. And like I said, things don't have to be perfect in your physical environment for your root chakra to be in balance, for you to feel safe and stable. We just need to reach a point of understanding that we have enough and that we are enough. And that no matter what else happens on the rest of this journey as we move up, because things get shaken up at each level, instability shows up again at each level. But if we know we have a basis, a stable foundation that we know will hold us, that will support us, that will always be there for us to return to safely, regardless of what happens in the rest of this journey, it makes it that much easier. So... I don't have exact details yet. I still have to figure out at least the basis of what we're going to do. But what I am going to do first is going to be a free challenge, essentially a reboot of The Fire Within, an updated version, a brand new one. So The Fire Within being the challenge that I ran last year, if you were there for that one. And then we're going to talk about a new program that has yet to be named, yet to be fully fleshed out, but I do know that I am going to guide you through clearing out each of these chakras and understanding how they relate in your own personal life. And it's going to be, we could do it in a one-on-one, but I'm going to 
put it out there as a group thing that we can do together, but you'll still get individual attention, individual feedback, individual support, and in a way, a bit of an expanded, very expanded Reiki session to give you more than just that one hour's worth of support, which I still highly recommend. So you can still come see me for just a one-off, one-on-one session. I don't currently have any in-person sessions on the books, but I really do need to get on that and get one planned. But if you do ever want to meet in person and you're local, just reach out to me. Don't book a session yet. Reach out to me first. If you're going to do a virtual session, just go online, carriejocala.com slash Reiki, and you can just book right there. But if you want to do an in-person session, you can always reach out regardless of whether or not I have, why am I using the word regardless so much today? I'm sorry. But (laughs) whether or not I have a block of in-person time scheduled at Stone and Sage in New Berlin, we can always chat about finding a time for just you and I to go rent out the room and do a session in person. If you have any questions about any of that, please reach out and let me know. Please jump inside the Fire Within Facebook group. It is my intention to actually stick to my word (laughs) and remain a constant presence in that group to do more within that group as well. Come follow me on Instagram. I'm posting a lot more on there, sharing more there talking about my 75 hard journey so far, which will probably also be another podcast episode. So come along for the journey. And if anything in this episode resonated with you, please feel free to share it. Please go ahead and leave a five-star rating and a positive review for the show to boost it in the podcast algorithms. And I appreciate you helping this podcast to continue to grow. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time. 